गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन थैंक यू अजय एंड थैंक यू भारत कृषक समाज फॉर द पार्टनरशिप विद फोलू आई एम अभिषेक रिप्रेजेंटिंग काउंसिल ऑन एनर्जी इन्वायरमेंट एंड वाटर एन इंडिपेंडेंट नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट पॉलिसी रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्टार्टेड एंड बेस्ड हेयर इन डेली अबाउट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स ओल्ड वी वर रनिंग वन ऑफ द पवेलियंस विच वॉज फोकसिंग ऑन हाउ डू वी लुक एट द सप्लाई चेंज इन द फूड सिस्टम द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम ऑफ आर फूड सिस्टम एज वेल एज द कंज्यूमर डिमांड uh and when when we think about the consumer demand in a country like india there are two big levers there is a public procurement role the pds ration the mid day meal schemes the urban canteens the indian army the indian railways which is determining a huge portion of what we consume on a day to day basis in the in the country and then of course there is a private sector uh which shapes a lot of the what we call aspirational consumption uh the biscuits the snacks the shelves in the supermarkets and so on and so forth and both of these were deliberated across uh, multiple sessions uh trying to cover three days of deliberation in five minutes so do bear with me if a lot of things get missed out uh talking about the public side and uh particularly focusing on the pds system which is in some ways the elephant in the room in terms of the volumes that it manages uh the public distribution system right the ration system Uh, and there were three key themes that emerged uh, and i kind of tried to frame them across three d's the first one was demarcate and deepen uh, so what does this sort of message came out was that instead of focusing on the 60% of the population which is still supported via the uh, pds ration many of them may not necessarily need the support or as much the support can we start focusing a lot more on the most vulnerable population uh it might be the 20 to 30% of the population but support them well support them not just with two kinds of calorie sufficient foods but really support them with a variety of food groups which can cover for various micronutrients and so on and so forth so demarcate and deepen uh the second d was decentralize this has been a mantra for the pds for the last decade or so but we have seen not as much implementation on the ground but whatever implementation we have seen we are not learning enough from it about 10 states in india has started decentralizing it can we learn enough so that we can scale up we can learn what are the challenges so that we can solve we certainly need to do a lot more learning that was one clear emerging theme the second theme in the decentralized was state capacity state capacity is not sufficient in many of the places and that is why the decentralization is also struggling and what can we learn from the states which have tried to solve it to some extent Uh, Karnataka and MP came out as two options, two states to look at. Can we learn more and more from what they are doing right and try and replicate within the right context uh, some replicable lessons? And the third thing in the decentralize is also localize, which means that as you do the decentralization of the power in terms of decision making and fund flow, also look at decentralization to the local food groups, the food groups which are relevant to the state. the food groups which are relevant to the rain fed areas of the state and so on so the more you can localize the better it would be to enable those local food loops uh, higher sustainability less resource footprint and nutritionally far more relevant to the local climate climatic conditions and in that vein the third d is diversify uh, diversify to the local food groups but also diversify uh, based on different kinds of uh, instruments you don't need to procure everything to enable diversification can we look at cash transfers coming in to enable diversification beyond wheat and rice so that's on the public ration i'll take maybe two quick minutes on the private sector side uh, on the private sector side again three things that emerged first one was there are a lot of emerging disruptors in the system uh new age companies some fpos doing phenomenal work in terms of stretching the imagination of our food system pushing for more healthy more nutrient dense and more sustainable options for the customers can we support disruptors a lot more uh both creating the enabling environment for them to support each other and there is a lot that they can share among each other and we saw uh sort of slightly surprisingly there is a lot of interest in they supporting each other but also can the government support uh, through the msme uh, route through the ministry of food processing industry route and so on the second thing that came out is around standards and mandates there are now generic esg standards around emission reporting scope 3 emission reporting etc but there are no standards which are still mandated around food companies or 
food uh, businesses in, in specific. We are not talking about reporting on nutrition as a business. Of course, each package will have the nutrition label, but how much nutrient relevant or rich food are you promoting as a business? Uh, there are no uh, standards around food, uh, sorry, the water footprint or the biodiversity uh, footprint or the loss that you are creating with your value chain. So can we create specific uh, reporting guidelines and the standards for the food companies and do it in a co-creative fashion? Bring civil society, bring private sector, bring government, and then create those standards so that it is already welcomed by all, co-creative, and then mandate them on the food companies. Uh, and the third thing is the transition cost and transition risks. While some of the food companies or food businesses are interested in looking at this transition to more regenerative, more healthier options, they do, of course, see the transition cost and transition risk involved. These are there for the businesses, but these are also there for the producers, if you're asking them to now produce in a regenerative fashion and so on and so forth. So how do we create, actually, a sense of equity around the sharing of these costs and risks? Who can bear that cost during the transition? Can we create unique financing solutions that can help address this transition risk and cost? I know I'm not probably doing a justice to much of the conversation that happened, which was far, far rich, but I hope some of these key takeaways will stick with us as we think about our food system more. With that, let me thank you all. <laughs>